What is the first thing you do in the morning? Are you waking up well rested and excited to start the day? Or does it look a little bit more like this? Hi, it's me, your mobile phone. You know, you're not as rich, good looking, or as happy as all these other people. <laughs> you fucking loser. Buy some stuff. <sighs> that made me feel just terrible. Better keep doing this throughout the whole day. <clears throat> Over the past decade, the percentage of the world being run by digital assets has skyrocketed. And with it, mental illness and depression. Most people are addicted to these mind-altering devices known as mobile phones. The average American spends three hours and 45 minutes on their phone every single day, and the numbers get even worse whenever you start looking at younger people. But why is this such a bad thing? Well, number one, the human brain is wired to compare itself to others. Back in the day, if you saw someone else who was stronger than you, your brain would basically tell you, hey, this guy's looking pretty strong, and I think that's probably gonna increase his likelihood to survive. I think you should try and also look like him because that might also increase our likelihood to survive. Or at least that's how it was whenever we were cavemen. Now that we live in a society, instead of increasing our likelihood for survival, comparison increases our likelihood for depression. Because social media isn't showing you accurate data to compare yourself to. Social media gives you the top 1% of the world to compare yourself to. And the top 1% of the world is only showing you the top 1% of their lives. Meaning whenever you spend that much time on social media looking at the top 1% of the top 1%, your brain's gonna be like, holy shit, man, you're doing so much worse than all these other 20 year old millionaires. I don't even know if there's even any point in us trying. You're just so far behind the rest of the world. It doesn't even seem like a good thing for mankind to try and pass on your genes. I think we should just die and let humanity evolve. Like, let's just give up. Number two, as if the direct link with anxiety and depression wasn't enough, social media is also robbing you of your time. Instead of spending four hours a day feeling useless by comparing yourself to the top 1% of the 1% of the world, you could be spending that four hours doing something fun that gets you closer to your goals and actually makes you happy. Number three, it has also completely destroyed our attention span to the point where our attention is now worse than that of a goldfish. This makes it very hard for us to spend long hours concentrating and going deep into a subject, something that is essential for work and life satisfaction. But I'm sure you're already aware of this. In fact, that's probably why you're watching this video right now. But if you're aware, how come you're unable to quit? Because an intellectual understanding of the problem is not enough whenever it comes to addictions. Most smokers know how terrible smoking is for them, and yet most smokers spend their whole lives doing it. The four most addictive qualities something can have are tangible rewards, stimulation, attention, and variation. And guess what? Social media has three out of the four most addictive qualities that something can have. Meaning the neuropathic grooves in our brain are pretty set. It's gonna be incredibly difficult for us to actually rewire them. But do we actually need to? And as stupid as this may sound after me just going on a rant about how terrible social media is, I actually don't think it's something that most people should completely cut out of their lives. Would it be better if we were able to revert the world back to a time before we had any social media? Maybe, but honestly, I just don't even care about that question. I don't like to think in terms of hypothetical scenarios. I like to see the world how it actually is and optimize for that. Going forward, the world is only going to get more digital and there is no way around that. Permanently becoming a digital minimalist is probably only going to set you up for a hard life. And there are some incredible benefits to social media that you just cannot ignore. Being able to connect with anyone around the world, being able to find out incredible information at any time you want, and being able to make a full-time living by posting content on there, these are just undeniable upsides. But it all comes down to whether or not you're using social media mindlessly or intentionally and that is my goal for you in this video welcome to video one of the digital detox challenge this is a one week long community challenge that you can take part in even if you're watching this video years after it was posted and if you want to find details on how you can register for this challenge make sure you stick around to the end so that I can explain. The steps that I'm about to lay out for you are based on research and studies that I read about in the Journal of Consulting and Clinical Psychology. If you want to learn a little bit more about that and my research on behavior change, I recommend you check out this video right now. But basically there are two main things that we need to accomplish here. We need to change your fundamental and emotional beliefs around social media, and we need to find you a replacement activity. So let's start with the first one. If you want to quit something, but for some reason you just can't, it's because you have intellectual understanding and not emotional understanding of why you should quit. 
A smoker may intellectually know that they should quit, but whenever they're sitting in a hospital and the doctor tells them that they have six months to live if they don't stop smoking, then all of a sudden they get emotional understanding and they'll just stop pretty much effortlessly. So how do we get emotional understanding about social media? Well, I'm sure you heard the phrase, you are the product of the content you consume. So to start, I want you consuming as much content as possible that points out all the negatives of social media. This video is a great start, but I also recommend you check out The Social Dilemma on Netflix if you haven't already, or you read the books Digital Minimalism and Deep Work. These are just my recommendations, but really the more content you consume around this topic, the better. And this will take up the entirety of day one of the seven day digital detox challenge. I want you consuming so much content about this until you're genuinely excited to start your digital detox. And once it feels like you just can't spend another minute online and you're just so excited to just free yourself and free your mind, then you're ready for day two, which is the digital detox itself. You're going to completely step away from all things digital. And I mean, from when you wake up to when you go to sleep, absolutely nothing digital can be consumed. Your mobile phones, tablets, laptops, TVs, anything. You're allowed to go on walks, eat healthy foods, hang out with friends, read books, whatever, just as long as you're not consuming any form of digital content. The very first time I did this, I actually got a slight headache. And I'm not sure if it was just because of the withdrawal from stimulation or the fact that I nearly read two books in a single day. But either way, it was just highlighting the problem that this was something that I really needed to be done. And the point of this isn't to change your dopamine levels. It's to change your psychology because by the end of this day, you will have provided your brain with overwhelming evidence that you not only don't need social media to have fun and stimulation to have fun, but that you're also happier by the end of the day whenever you don't spend so much time mindlessly consuming. Plus, you'll also get the best night of your sleep ever that night. Trust me, it's so good. And the very next day after the detox and for the five remaining days of the digital detox challenge, I want you creating. I want you to find your replacement habits. Now, it can be a brand new skill that you've never practiced before, or it can be picking up an old hobby. But the idea here is that instead of consuming content, you wanna be creating it. Instead of watching videos, create videos. Instead of listening to music, write music, or learn an instrument. Or if you watch archery videos, practice archery. Even though that's not actually creating, but it's still a fruitful activity, and I'm just gonna include any sports or skills that you learn as fruitful and creating, even though they're not really. It can be literally anything you want. Just follow your curiosity, do whatever you want. Although generally, the type of content you consume online would be a pretty good indicator of the type of thing you'd have fun creating. You can change it up each day, or you can focus on the one thing and try and improve as much as possible over the course of the five days. It's literally completely up to you, just as long as you're creating. Now, you are actually allowed to consume content during these five days, but you're not allowed to consume it mindlessly. You have to be very intentional about the content you consume and you're only allowed to consume it if you're actually able to put it into use afterwards. And you also don't have to actually post all this stuff online like I do with YouTube videos. Although I really do recommend this because this is going to help you build so many valuable skills going forward. As I said, the world's only getting more digital and it's really going to turn the internet from a liability for you into an asset if you are posting online. So you don't have to post online but it's highly recommended. And you can also absolutely do this alone, but I did say that this was a community challenge. And according to studies, one of the best ways to change your beliefs is to change the people that you spent your time with, which is why I created the Digital Detox Challenge Facebook group, which you can join via the link in the description. This is where you can link up with other people doing the challenge, you can bounce experiences and ideas off each other. And of course, I'll be right there in the group to answer any questions that you may have. I'm also gonna be giving away a ton of free training in the group, including the Digital Detox Challenge workbook to help you work through it each seven days of the week, as well as some live Q&A trainings. And of course, if you want, you can link up with some accountability partners in there. And studies have proven over and over again that one of the biggest factors that determines whether or not a change is permanent is based on the people you spend most of your time with. Stay in a barber's long enough, you're going to get a haircut. And that's why I made this group. I don't just let anyone in, I only let actual people who are really dedicated to improving their lives in there. So make sure you take advantage for the group now and apply for it via the link in the description. And if you do want to learn more about behavior change and my research on it, make sure you do check out the video that's on screen right now. And make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be posting a part two to this video on what to do after the digital detox.